how's the rehab coming along with uh, with the injury? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Just same as everybody, I'm sure, struggling away a bit during lockdown and just missing sort of doing things and seeing people. But the uh, no, in general terms, rehab's going well. And I had my last meeting with the consultant on Friday there, and he was very positive that the bones healing really well, and and um, just have to keep uh, taking one day at a time and trying to keep progressing. And uh, I think you'd mentioned it's a bit more of a mental thing now about trusting your leg. Is that a, has that been a big part of the recovery, the mental side of it? Yeah, massively. It's sort of strange. Like when you sort of get injured like that, you sort of lose the whole trust of your whole leg. You go to put weight on it and it just shoots with pain. You can't do it. So it's just gaining that confidence. And um, Gareth Robinson, my physio, is unbelievable. Like, I'm very lucky now to have him at Ben Torn. But he, um, I, he's been brilliant. And sometimes he tells me to do these exercises and I'm looking at him like, there's no way I can jump or, you know, I know way I can do that or whatever, but it's just once you sort of do it a couple of times, it's uh, it's like getting on a ride, you know, on some of those roller coasters when you think, oh, there's no way I could do it. And then once you've done it once, you're like, here, I, I can do that, you know, I'll get back on again. So, um, yeah, just sort of just getting through that mental apprehension and um, more just slowly building up and slowly building up the impact. So just sort of trying not to think too much about what I can't do and focus more on what I can. But as you say, it's, a tough mental battle just giving the confidence in the leg and then also you know just sometimes you don't feel like you're progressing like as quickly as you want and you're just so desperate to get back and you see you know like you're watching games on tv and you see other people playing matches and you're just desperate to be out there but gareth kept getting me to take videos so every week i sort of take videos of what i'm doing and then if you do feel in sort of low in confidence i just look back a couple of weeks and you go do you know what i actually I didn't feel it because you because it's like you know it's like when you see people and you don't feel like they've grown and then when you see someone you haven't seen in a few months you know a younger uh, family relative or whatever you're like geez you know you've grown so much so it's probably similar with the rehab when i look back a couple of weeks you can sort of see the progress so much more and it obviously well it's, it's class that uh, the rehab's going well and you've got people around you and um, obviously coming back means you can be a lonely thing in itself let alone in the midst of a pandemic when you can't see anybody anyway. So um, has it been somewhat of a silver lining that you're at home for your rehab uh, as opposed to maybe being um, abroad? Oh, massive. Like, to be f- I don't know how I would have done it without that. Like, and I'm saying this as if it's all really positive. There have been some really like, grim days too, like particularly the first sort of week I was on that many painkillers and drugs that um, I probably didn't feel too negative <laughs> that first week. And then you sort of come out from that and you get all the messages and, and then it's sort of all that dies down. And like, you know, I, I actually moved in. I had to move into this room because I couldn't get up the stairs. So I couldn't really even bend my knee to get out of bed. It was horrible. Like, and uh, yeah, my family were so, so good. I, don't know how I, done, I really, really don't know what I would have done if I'd been in England. Like it was been such a massive help and even just having their support and, and motivation and, you know, like keeping on top of me, making sure I'm eating well. And at the first couple of weeks was particularly difficult where I couldn't do much. So giving me lifts and helping me uh, even just getting dressed and everything at the start was a huge help. But even now, I like just having that bit of social crack and, and pushing me on, doing rehab exercises with me. And um, a lot of the time they're doing little balancing and throwing balls to me and doing part of my rehab too. So it's been a massive help, but at the same time, it's been really difficult. Like even in the first couple of weeks, I think the first first like sort of four weeks, I was really struggling. Like my head was just gone, and I was just like, I don't even want to do this rehab. I'm not getting any better. But now I started to see the progress, and since I've been allowed to drive again and I'm able to be able to walk, you sort of start to see the progress and a bit more freedom, and you can do a bit more. So it's been okay from then. But as you say, it's I don't know how I would have done it if I wasn't at home. So it's just just they. I always think what's for you won't pass you. I'm just thankfully as grim enough as the injury's been. It's been nice to spend a lot of time at home this last sort of year with having been away in Australia and living on my own in the year before that in Scotland. So, yeah, I'm just enjoying it and trying to sort of make the best of the time because as much as I'm looking forward to getting back, when I do get back playing, you might not see your family much for a number of months. So just trying to enjoy things while I can. And uh, you mentioned cooking there and sort of keeping your mind off stuff. It looks like you're going to give Joe X a run for his money here. If you're... Uh... You've got the cooking Instagram up and going. Has that been something that you can channel your energy into? Also being able to eat healthy alongside of it as well. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, that was, um, I always loved cooking. Like obviously having to live on my own for the last two years, you sort of have to sink or swim. There's only so many times you can uh, plead somebody to cook for you or get, <laughs> eat out. So no, I've, I've always loved cooking and it's probably something I've always sort of wanted to do. And 
um, I was able to do so little, you know, obviously with the lockdown, but I was hardly able to get up and walk and go about or drive. So it was just one of those ideas. It was like, maybe I'll try this. And I've just been good. Like, I've, it's funny, like, people may be trying different dishes that I've done and sending me recommendations. But as you say, I love, like, cooking and my food. And it's been enjoyable to sort of do something well out of football and out of my comfort zone. And hopefully at the end of this lockdown, I'll be able to say, okay, well, it hasn't been a great year. Football-wise, I haven't progressed. And, it, you know, I'm not going to become any better of maybe a footballer but at least i uh, maybe I've learned a lot of new skills and improved as a person maybe and that's that leads us into the fact that you know everybody says that like cooking is very good very therapeutic for your mental health and you're saying about improving and, and focusing on things that you can do is there any other tips or any other things um that you've been doing for your mental health because I mean regardless of, of, a, of a serious injury it has been quite tough um in general for people in, in isolation and in lockdown as I said it's and I'm definitely not an expert on it. I've had days where it's been grim for me and I think it's important people to sort of see that. Everybody's struggling through it and I'm just lucky to have a family with me. But no, I've kept myself as busy as I can. I think looking back at different times where I have been really down in the last sort of like six months or whatever, that I think keeping busy has been the biggest thing that's helped me. So just trying to get involved in different projects and when you focus again, as I say, on what you can do. And I mean, look, I miss my friends and miss family so much, especially because I was in Australia for a year came back into the pandemic and then sort of it's been another year. I it's actually two years since I've so I haven't seen any of my best mates in two years, you know, a lot of family members and cousins and so that's been, you know, really tough. And if you sat all day and thought about what you couldn't do, you'd go mad. So I yeah, I've tried to get myself involved in like so many different things. So yeah, the cooking's one. And um, I'm trying to learn the guitar at the minute as well. So that's another like there are so many things when you when you sit down and go, Well, what can I do here? So I'm doing the guitar, I'm trying to look online classes of it. So it's another sort of fun challenge and then uh, yeah on top of that I was like doing a lot of gym work so the good thing is if the hard thing as a footballer is you, because there's so many matches you don't really get a chance much to do the strength work in the gym so Sandy McDermott at the sports science like mentor has been brilliant so I'm doing like four gym sessions a week and starting to really feel like I'm a lot stronger and lean and um, yeah so that's another sort of thing I've been doing and um, I've obviously got my open university degree as well which has kept me busy I think that's what those dates in the background. I should never put those up because my dad keeps coming in and be, oh, it's two weeks until that day, then you better get that done. So <laughs> he's on me. But the Open University degree has been great um, and sort of learning more about it in, in sort of business and science and math and stuff. So it's been another thing I've done. And then I've actually started taking like any sort of any courses I can get up my hands on, I've sort of jumped on. So um, I've just completed my level one um, introduction in talent identification. So it's like through the Professional Football Scouts Association, and um, so I'm doing a couple of courses through it, and um, then I'm doing an opposition analysis course as well at the minute. So I'm just working my way through those, and then hopefully in the summertime I'm doing my B license and the first part of my A license in the summer. So looking at you know doing my coaching badges and um, yeah, just trying to do as many things as I can. Yeah, because my two brothers are pretty qualified referees, and he said, "Oh, why don't you do why don't you do the refereeing badge?" And I'm lucky because I'm with the English PFA, they pay for half of anything you do. So I think it was only 50 quid and then they'll pay for half. So I was like, do you know what, I'll do it. So I'm halfway through it. I did half of it yesterday and I've the other half to do. So I'll uh, come out with a few qualifications, but it's been really interesting to see all the different sides of football. And obviously we were talking before about the co commentating and it's been brilliant. Like to be able to get out to matches, I know I'm so fortunate. Like I know so many people just love to go to matches, so to be able to go to the live games and sort of see your side of work, you know, the media side. So it's been great. I've just tried my best to, you know, look at the media, the opposition sort of scouting, maybe I'll do coaching and um, all the different sides of football. It's been really interesting, obviously, in addition to the playing and then you see the physio and the strength and conditioning. So every asset nearly that a footballer has to work with in and then refereeing sorry, as well. So I've just tried to sort of gain more knowledge about that and sort of and um, hopefully it'll give me a better understanding and I'll go back to playing football and how it all works. Also, finally, just a bit on, um, obviously this is your last campaign with the 21s and maybe didn't end the way that you would like to like it to. Um, you did have a couple of games there just before um, before the injury. Uh, what's sort of your thoughts on your time with the 21s and also your thoughts for the future and a wee bit about the talent that's coming through? Yeah, I'm very, I think I maybe played with 15 games under 21, so it was great. Um, it was just the first campaign that I was part of when I was sort of the year younger than everybody was, you know, couldn't have went any better. I didn't get any injuries. We beat Spain and I think we maybe went a run of maybe winning 
five, six games in a row, which for like a Northern Ireland youth team was something, you know, class to be part of and to play with so many great players. But yeah, obviously just went to Australia and I knew that would probably take a bit of a hit on the under-21 stuff because I missed maybe a camp or two, which was disappointing. And then COVID sort of stopped another camp. And then when I did come back, then I tore the ankle ligament just literally the week before that was at the Malta trip and somebody else were playing it. So that was Malta in Denmark, was it? And then yep. I had just come back a week before the next trip, so I wasn't really fit in it. It was good to be there and I really enjoyed it, but I was I knew I wasn't up, you know, back up really to full fitness. And then I think I maybe got the leg break a week before the um, the last trip to Ukraine. So I got it is really disappointing that I didn't, you know, get to play more games and it sort of finished on a bit of a sadder note of missing games and it's probably something that, you know, people say you don't appreciate what you have until it's gone. Like, you know, maybe thinking now, nah, obviously I would love to play for the senior team and it would be class, but you maybe don't, never know if you ever will get there. And you sort of think, God, you might not play for Northern Ireland again. It, you know, it's, but um, yeah, like, like it's, it's been brilliant. I've, I've had such a good experience from the Northern Ireland, you know, through the club and I set up and met so many great people. And um, yeah, it is disappointing that it fully finished in that way, but, it just suppose why it's the appetite now to try and get back from the injury and get back playing at the highest level I can and see, you know, what I can do. And it's been great to see how many young talents have come through. Obviously, Ali McCann and Dan Ballard and boys like that have done unbelievably well and, and are now getting their senior caps and, and two great lads. And looking now into the under-21 squad, they have a very talented squad again. And it's a tough group for them, but I'm sure they'll be really excited about the prospect playing the likes of Spain and stuff. So... And um, yeah, like obviously the next group coming through, the Alpha McCalmans and Nathan Galbraith and boys like that too. So it's very exciting to see and hopefully um, I'll be able to follow it a wee bit more. But it's been a class experience and something that I've, uh, I've really enjoyed. And hopefully now I just can't wait now to get back from the injury myself and get back playing and just itching to go.